All right. Thank you. So your question is what makes what? Guys, stop. No, uh, where's the pink one? I'm sorry. The pink one's not there. Karan, you brought back the wrong one. You brought no. back the green one. Yeah, the green one that you, that was the green one that's there. All right, no problem. If you see a pink one, take a pink one. Um, the pupil is the color part of the eye. So that can dilate or constrict. That has nothing to do with bones. That's going to be a, a neurological response. So when you have a lot of light that comes into the pupil, it's part of the nerve I'm sorry. It like it bothers up the nerve cell. Like no, it's not bothering. It's working normally. So just listen to my explanation. So when the doctor, if the doctor has ever flashed a light in your eye and taken it away, flashed it real quick and taken it away, what they're doing is to check to make sure that the pupil has that. Um, constrictive response. So if you're in a dark room, your pupils will actually widen to take in more of the area that's in the room because there's less light. But when you go outside or when the doctor flashes that light, it's called a pupillary response. When they flash that light across your eye and they take it away real quick, what they're looking for is to make sure that your pupil constricts. So instead of damaging the nerves that are at the back of the eye, the pupil will constrict to limit the amount of light that's going through the eye. So that if you're always, um, you know, if your pupils are always dilated mm -hmm. and you're going outside, then it may cause some nerve damage to the nerves that are at the back of the eye. So the body maintains homeostasis by constricting to limit how much light gets into the eye. So it's not necessarily that something's going wrong, but that's what's supposed to happen if the body's functioning normal. If you've ever seen those TV shows and a doctor will go over to a patient that, that they want to check to see if they're alive or dead and they'll open up the eye and they'll flash the light in the eye and they said there's no pupillary response. So then the person's brain is not responding to the light that's going in so they'll consider that, that person to be non-responsive and dead and then they move on to the next person. Yes sir, one more question um, then we got to go. I have a question. Yes. Um, if the, how, how you, when I went to the doctor for my mm -hmm. eyes, because I have bad eyes, do you think that I spent so much that my eyes are getting worse? Like, how often when you squint, your eyes get bad? Maybe it's the muscles that are being pulled when you're squinting, because you're actually causing your muscles to constrict. So that might be what's causing your vision to worsen a little bit. You didn't ask them to explain that? Yeah, mm -hmm. see, I'm not an ophthalmologist. Op Opto ophthalmo ophthalmo <laughs> yeah, I'm not an ophthalmologist. So I don't know everything about the muscles around the eye. I know which muscles are there. But there may be an imbalance because you're squinting so much to try to see. Um, did they give you newer glasses or stronger yeah. lenses? Okay, so it might be because you're squinting that you're causing an imbalance in the muscles and that's what's worsening your vision. So if they change your prescription, then that's a good thing. All right, perfect. All right, so let's move on. So we have our osteo Sites or osteocytes or bone cells. Trinity, stay with me, honey. Farsane, you with us? Thank you. All right, so osteocytes are what? Bone cells. Thank you. Osteocytes are bone cells. And anytime we see the word osseous, it's referring to bone tissue. Excellent. Next one, Ted, read for me blood. Blood is a liquid or a vascular connective tissue that circulates it. Uh, is that yes, it is. And they include red blood cells called what? Erythrocytes. Erythrocytes, white blood cells called leukocytes. Leukocytes and uh, platelets. Platelets called thrombocytes. Thrombocytes, which form blood. Excellent. So again, we have the word sites and all of these cells. So what do sites mean? Cells. Cells. Excellent. Here we go, add into our vocabulary. Let me make sure I'm on camera, yep. Erythro means red. Leuco means white. So an erythrocyte is what type of cell? Red cell. A red what? Red cell. Not just red cell, where do we find it? In the uterus. In the what? 
Blood cells, make sure you know it's blood. Erythrocyte is gonna be blood. That's our red blood cell. Oh, that was right. Okay, so A, yeah, and someone has this here? Mm-hmm. That's the blood, that's the white blood cell that's being attacked. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, so now when you hear that, you'll know what it means. Her question was, if you didn't hear her, if someone has leukemia, it's the white blood cell that's being attacked, and that is correct. Leuk means white, so it's a leukocyte, white blood cell. And then you have to find out specifically which white blood cell is being attacked. Yes. Very good. Do you have a question for us, Amy? Okay, perfect. So when we have leukocyte, what type of blood cell is that? Excellent. White blood cell. Would you say, Ted? Yes, sir. So when a mosquito bite, is what cell are you taking out of it? They're sucking blood. And what, what cell? What, red blood cell. Oh. So within our blood, we have red blood cells, we have white blood cells, we have platelets. So how can but white blood? blood cells are not, um, wait, white blood cells are not the most abundant. And there are different types of white blood cells. But the red blood cells are the most abundant. So What's your question? How come they don't take the white blood cells out of us? I don't know. White blood cells are circulating because they have a job to do. So that's like the army within the vascular system. That's the analogy I want you to associate with. When we do cardiovascular system, we're going to get into the function of the different white blood cells. And you'll see that part of their function is for immunity. So that's defense against anything that might invade the body. So think of the white blood cells as an army. Yeah. Then if the white blood cells are in abundance, that means there's an infection. So we don't have a lot of white blood cells circulating. You have white blood cells like patrolling. Like the police might patrol the neighborhood. <clears throat> Excuse me, you have white blood cells that patrol through the body. And once they find an invader, they're like, uh-oh, and they send out a signal, and then you have more white blood cells coming in. Uh -huh. So when you have, one second, so when you have an infection, that's when your white blood cell count goes up. But if you're healthy and you don't have an infection, your white blood cell should, level should be normal. And we'll see what normal levels are. One quick question, then we gotta keep going. No, I'm just saying, uh, I don't know if you can it's like, basically the white blood cells are like basically an army mm -hmm. or something. You called it like a, a, a disease or infection or something like that? Infection. It's like, you call it an invader, so basically it's like the body, it's like when the body knows like, how you're being, the body's being attacked, it's basically giving a single, uh, it's not necessarily to the nerves, and we're going to see when we do cardiovascular system, it's not necessarily to the nerves, but there will be least uh, chemical mm -hmm. that lets the body know this is happening over here, we need some more guys over here, and then that's when the backup comes in. So, but what if the infection just like, it grows, mm -hmm. and it's like, there's not enough like, cells, like, Mm -hmm. Then you may see that the person might get a little bit sicker. They might get a little bit sicker because the body's not responding. So you know how um, a white person, they seem to tell like they're getting sick because they can't tell? How do you tell them it's like? That can happen with black people too. That's well, not just white. You've never but seen a, a black person that didn't look well? Thank you. Wait, 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 one second, Karan. It's, 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 I, I, wait, I know what you're saying. That you're saying that they, their face might look flushed. They may not. They may look a little pale. Their head part saying thank you. They may look a little pale or something. That happens with black people, too. You can see black people that, that look a little, you know, pale or tired. You know, you know how you get sick, right? But then it's like, you, like, you just... Guys. Like, you know how you're walking around, mm -hmm. and you know you're sick, but it's like, it doesn't, but like, other people can't see it, like, it doesn't show that you're sick. Maybe you're not as sick as the next person. Some people could be sick, and they still, you know, bounce around well, like, and okay, the job they have to do. Have your body might send you signals about an infection. You might have an uh, enlarged lymph nodes. You might have enlarged lymph nodes in the area or something like that. Ah. There are different things that can happen. So it's just, but we're not getting into that now. When we do immunity, we'll get into that. Okay.
Okay, what was your question? Ted and Trinity, stop talking. What's your question? I'm sorry, say it again. No, COVID, I believe, is attacking the respiratory system. So not necessarily white blood cells or red blood cells. But you might have the antibodies because the white blood cells are showing up to fight off the infection. So you'll have antibodies that say, that say COVID was present and we tried to fight it off. Here are the antibodies that we produce. So you'll have that within your system. Okay. Yep, I do too. Okay, so for our leukocytes, though leuco means white and leukocytes are going to be white blood cells. Our platelets, those are called thrombocytes and platelets are going to be responsible for our clotting factor. Which vitamin is also going to be active? Which fat soluble vitamin is also going to be active for blood clotting? Ted. You're going to say A? Oh, not quite. Trinity, what you got? K. Which one? K. Excellent. K for clotting. Vitamin K, fat soluble K for blood clotting. Excellent. Vitamin K for blood clotting. That's on camera, yes. All right, so for our platelets or thrombocyte, platelet is a little different. This is our red blood cell, RBC, I'm abbreviating, white blood cell. When we get to our platelet, it comes from a megakaryocyte. So site means what? No, nope, site means what? Cell, thank you. So what does mega mean? Big. Excellent. So a megakaryocyte is a big cell. And what happens is when you think of a platelet, think of a plate. If you stand in the middle of a floor and you take one of the plates in your house and you drop it on the floor, what's going to happen? Breaks. Break into pieces, right? So this megakaryocyte will actually break down and will get broken pieces of our megakaryocyte. And these broken pieces, these are our platelets or our thrombocytes. So these are broken pieces of a cell. So our platelets or thrombocytes, they're not going to be as big and look like our red blood cells or white cells because they're broken pieces of a megakaryocyte. So we'll get into more details with that again when we do cardiovascular system. But so those are our three types of cells in our connective tissue. Now our connective tissue, the only one that's going to be liquid is going to be our blood. The other ones are all going to be fibrous. Okay, the only one that's liquid is blood. The last one is cartilage. Today I'll read cartilage for me. Oh, that one. Cartilage, cartilage is, a strong. is a strong and flexible connective tissue made of the pol collagen, mm -hmm. fibers, protein, uh, elastic the fibers, the strong the stretchable fibers. Thank you. But cartilage is also um, avascular, avascular. Evascular, meaning blood does not flow within cartilage. Thank you. There are three types of cartilage. Perfect. All right. So blood is avascular, meaning, I'm just, blood is, whew. cartilage is avascular, meaning it does not have a blood flow. No blood to the area. If something is vascular, the heart is vascular, it has blood flowing to it. Your muscles vascular, it has blood flowing to it. What's your question, Karan? So when you pass out, does that mean your blood flow stops or like, no, as long as you're breathing, your blood will keep moving yeah, through your body. You pass out, so you're not breathing at all. No, no, no. Some people can pass out and still be breathing. They may have fainted. It doesn't mean they're dead. You can still pass out and be breathing. Someone might hyperventilate and pass out. You can still be breathing. Just because someone passes out doesn't mean they stop breathing. Because remember, breathing and your heartbeat, those are automatic. We don't, we can't just say, I'm going to stop my heart. You know, like a kid, I'm going to hold my breath until I get what I want. <gasps> my kid, I got to breathe. You can't do that. The body's going to keep functioning automatically without us stepping in to do certain things. Like and heartbeat and breathing are one of them. That's like saying when you drown on your dad and somebody say, do you drown? That's different. What's different with drowning? Water. Water. 
Water fills up your lungs, excellent. The lungs are not supposed to have fluid in them. That's why when, person, when a person has pneumonia, pneumonia is what? Fluid in the lungs. When a person goes swimming, if they pull them out in time, or even if you're swimming in the pool and one of your friends are playing and they dunk you, and you come up and you start doing what? You spitting up the water. It's no different if you're drinking water at home and your relative or you saw something funny on TV, somebody said something funny, and it goes down the wrong pipe. What do you start doing? You start coughing it up because the body says, nope, I got fluid in my lungs. It's not supposed to be there. Homeostasis kicks in. The body will try to maintain itself to be in a healthy state. So homeostasis kicks in. If someone drowns, there's too much liquid, too much fluid in the lungs to get it all out, and then that's when the person dies. There's so too much that. fluid. I'm sorry? No, they are dead if, they're, if they drown. No, I'm saying, like, you know how many people who kiss them is going to life? Huh? Oh, baby, you talking about a TV show? No. Yeah. That's not kissing. What, CPR? Yeah. That's different because it, it's, it's the different amount of water that might be in the lungs and how long the person has been in the water. So the longer a person has been in the water, you gotta remember there are cavities in our body that are gonna fill up with a um, fill up with water. They're going to fill up with water. So that's totally different. So if someone was drowning and they were rescued, and then the person performs CPR, and while they're performing CPR, the person starts coughing and the water comes up, that's when it's different. They have not been underwater that long, and they were they did not have too much water in their lungs that they were able to cough it up. But if it's to the point where there's too much water in the lungs, the lungs are no longer going to be elastic and going to allow that water to be coughed up. Okay? All right, so first thing, close the computer for me. Thank you. Appreciate it. I know, it's so funny. I know, it's so much better than me, I know. So the first one we have is hyaline cartilage. So hyaline cartilage is gonna be our most abundant. I'm just trying to make sure we finish on time, so I'm going a little faster. But we're gonna go over this again. Hyaline cartilage is our most abundant type of cartilage found in the body. Places where you're going to find hyaline cartilage is going to be on the tip of the nose. So this, feel your nose, especially if you wear glasses, the bony part, this is the part of the nasal, um, nasal bone. The tip of the nose that you can wiggle and move, you can push in, that is the cartilage. This is the part of the person who gets a pierced nose ring or something, it goes into the cartilage of the nose. The cartilage of the nose will come down. Now, because this is a skeleton, it's only bone. That's why we don't have the cartilage on the tip of it. We're only showing the bone that makes up the human body, not the cartilage. So we don't have any cartilage here, but if we had cartilage, the nose would come out a little bit further, and we would have our two nostrils right there. Yes, sir? So is this like, like extra skin or something? Like an extra layer in front of the nose? Not necessarily an extra layer, because the car you have the cartilage there, you have the skin over it. But there's no blood supply here. So if ever you get punched in the nose and the nose starts to bleed or something, it's because this up here, the nasal bone was damaged. Not because the cartilage was damaged, but the nasal bone was damaged. So some people who have had a broken nose, their nose might actually bend a little to the left or the right because Ew. they got punched in it. And when it healed, it didn't heal straight. What? Want me to repeat it? No, please don't. <laughs> no, I'm going to repeat it. Relax. I said if someone gets punched in the nose, and when they get punched in the nose, it's not the cartilage that gets damaged or broken, it's the nasal bone. So if the nasal bone does not heal properly, when the nose heals, there might be a bend in it. So the nose, the nasal bone may go a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right instead of being straight like when they were born. So that's because it's the nasal bone that's damaged and not the cartilage. That's all. Okay. Yes. So how come, how come when it's high, you have no beam? How does that affect the, the um... That has to do with internal pressure in the body. So if you're too hot and your body says, okay, the person is too hot, we need to decrease the body temperature, you may have a nosebleed. And it's just going to decrease some of the pressure that's in the body. So that's that, it. Why is that like that when it's cold? When you're cold? Because you need the heat in your body to help you to stay warm. If you're losing blood when it's cold, you're going to freeze a lot faster. So the heat stays in the body. The body's not going to let you have a nosebleed. Okay, so our hyaline cartilage is going to be found in our nose. It is also going to be found on the cartilage connecting our ribs to our sternum. Connecting ribs, hey, put it. You understand? 
connecting ribs to sternum. This is going to be our hyaline cartilage. Got it? Yeah. All right, other place where we're going to find our hyaline cartilage, nose, rib cage, and then, oh, movable bones. So our movable bones, when we're running, we're being active. Hyaline cartilage has to keep these joints nice and movable. A pitcher on a baseball team, a quarterback on a football team, they are using this shoulder joint. This is their money maker. This is a $20 million arm. You got to take care of it. It is the hyaline cartilage that's on this joint that keeps it nice and smooth. You understand? If you want to move your arm a little bit, some of us might feel a little popping, some of us might feel a little cricking, a little cracking, and that's because we have some arthritis. So this right here, if you see a baseball player and he's not pitching, he's in a dugout, what's he doing to his shoulder? He's doing ice. No, he's got his shoulder in ice because he wants to keep it nice and cool. He does not want it to swell or get inflamed. He's going to keep it relaxed so that ice is on it until he's back on that field. The quarterback, when he goes to sit down, what do they put over him, especially if he's playing in the winter? They put a jacket on him because they want that shoulder to stay warm. Because if that shoulder gets cold, he's not going to throw as good as if that shoulder were warm and he's using that muscle constantly. Now he's got to warm it up again. That's why he's on a football field before the game starts and he's throwing practice throws to warm up that shoulder. If you let him sit down on the bleachers while the defense is on the field and there's no jacket on him, this is getting cold and it's not gonna work the same way anymore. So they put a jacket over him to keep that shoulder warm. We got the shoulder joint. We got our knees. So in here, we have our hyaline cartilage because our knee has to bend to make sure we can keep running and jumping and moving. We've got that hyaline cartilage in here. Same thing at the hip joint. What's the Jamaican racer bolt? That hip joint is nice and healthy, nice and lubricated, nice and tight, so that nothing is loose and he's gonna be able to make those runs. Inside this hip joint, acephemoral acetabular joint, that's what it's called, we'll get to it when we do the bones. But inside these joints, they need that hyaline cartilage so there's no grinding of bone because that leads to arthritis. Yes, sir. Exactly, because the basketball players, they have to run and jump. So they've got to get that cardio in when they practice. That's when you see basketball players, what are they called? Those suicides, what are those? Yeah, when you run and you squat and then you, you touch the, what is it called? Suicides. Suicides. They've got to run, get that cardio going. Then they've got to be able to bend, get those joints nice and loose, touch the board, and run back again. You understand? What does the coach do to you if you're the last one in the back, yeah. taking the longest? Yeah. If you got 10 players, yeah. and player number 10 is going slow, and then going back, what does the coach do to the one that's the slowest? He bench you? Huh? He'll bench you? He'll probably do extras. Oh, he'll do extras? Because yeah. the coach wants him to do what? Keep on pace. Keep on pace. Keep up with your team. If your team is rushing the ball, they steal the ball and they're rushing down to your basket in order to score their points, you can't have two or three guys at the other end of the court. Y'all go ahead our way here. You can't do that. Keep pace, keep up, let's go, let's go, keep pace. If your team is moving, you're moving. So that's when our hiring cartilage comes in. One question, then I gotta move, yes. So if you get a cramp, if you get a cramp, if you get a cramp in your calves, does that mean that, does that affect the um, bone? No, cramps are gonna be muscular. Cramps are gonna be muscular. So the cramp may prevent the joint from moving properly, but it's not affecting the bone. Cramps are gonna be muscular. Okay? The next one we have is fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage cartilage is going to be thick and it's going to be midline. Where's our midline? Trinity, where's our midline? Yeah, we did this months ago. Where's our midline? Excellent, excellent. Can you verbalize that for me? In the middle. Yes, there we go, Trinity. So our midline is going to be an imaginary line that comes right down the center of the body. 
imaginary line that comes right down the center of the body. So the only two places where you're going to find our fibro cartilage in our midline is going to be in between our intervertebral discs. So these are our vertebra. These are our vertebra. They protect our spinal cord. Got it? Which cavity do we find our spinal cord and our vertebral bones? Which cavity? Ventral. What is it? Spinal cavity is where the spinal cord is. Excellent. But where is the spinal cord, spinal um, vertebra? Where is it? Ventral. Oh, no. Whoops, nope. I want the next one out. Spinal cavity, spinal cord, vertebral bones, those are going to be in which cavity? It's not ventral, so it has to be dorsal. There we go. So our dorsal cavity is going to include our spinal cord, our spinal vertebra. That's our dorsal cavity. So our intervertebral disc is where we find our fibrocartilage. The next place where we find our fibrocartilage is going to be in our pubic symphysis. This is anterior, where the two parts of the pelvic bone meet. Why do you think it's necessary that we have a movable fibrocartilage right in the center of where our two pelvic bones meet anteriorly? Why is that essential? Because of what? Take a guess. Why is this essential? Why do we need movement there? Say it. I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear what you said. No, not urine. Urine's going to be from the urethra, and that's going to be internal. That's going to be deeper. But right here, where we have our fiber cartilage. Go ahead. So you don't crack the bone. Oh, get in there, on the right track, get in there. Anybody else? Oh my, oh my, oh my. What about when we're walking? Mm -hmm. oh. When we're walking. Oh. Because oh. we got to be able to have our pelvis move. It actually rotates. As we're walking, it rotates. And some people got more sway than others. So some people can work in, mm, yes honey, oh yes. And they're on the runway, okay? So some people can work it. You gotta have that sway so that this pelvis is able to rotate. Yeah. Now for Gussie, hers is tight because everything is screwed in nicely. So I can't rotate it without unloosening stuff and I'm not gonna do that. So in our fibrocartilage and in our intervertebral disc, that's where we have our um, most rotation. Like the people who do um, karate and kickboxing and MMA, and they're bouncing and twisting in the air and doing all of this stuff. We've got that fibro cartilage in there. The last one is going to be our elastic cartilage. We're going to put, yes. Is it like flexibility with your body? Yes, you're going to have more flexibility. Uh, shock absorption and an antipatibal disc and pubic symphysis. So that's what you're going to have in here. Yes. How come forward you can't do with flexibility? I'm trying to do not do flexibility. Have you been trained how to do it? No. Well, that might be the first problem. <laughs> so, like, bless you. You have to be trained how to do that. You try to do it and you don't know how to do it, you can break your neck. Yeah. You got to be trained how to do that. You can't just say, I'm going to do a backflip. You just can't do that. You got to be trained how to do that. Okay, the last one we have is elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage has the most elastic fibers. It still has collagen, but it has the most elastic fibers. We're going to have our elastic cartilage. If Gus had an ear, it would be over here. But because it's cartilage, it is not physically here. We just have our skull. Our skull. Got it? Mm -hmm. So where you see this little hole right here, if y'all ever come up and see Gus personally and say hi, right there is going to be part of our ear canal. That's where the ear Yes, everything is down in there. That's where the, um... So, when, I'm sorry, let me just finish this. So when our ears, when we want to pierce them, if you had a nana or a grandma and you did something and they twisted it, ooh, I had a woman in my church, she would get her son on Sunday when that boy was playing, she'd take that ear and he was like, and that ear turned so red. You could twist it and it goes back in shape. So you may see there are some people who pierce their ears 
and put in those round pieces in order to stretch the hole. So if it has that elastic cartilage that will allow it to stretch. There's a video that's um, in your notes. You can click on it and see it if you want later. I'll show it in the morning when we start. Make sure you push in your chair, please. Is this for me? Thank you. Um, first thing. No, this is from today. I'm not collecting this today. We'll go over it. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Where are you six period? Six period, I will be here until I have lunch duty. Second lunch. Second lunch, I have to go downstairs. Thank you, guys. Push in your chairs, please. Thank you. Prop my door open, please. Thank you. Thank you, Tadeo.